Now here's an interesting case of an unauthorized work. Um, there's an artist named, named Rhyme, um, and he, he's known for doing what's called Vandalize. Get it? Vandalize. It's pretty dope. Okay. I'll show it to you first. Okay. Uh, and he su sued Machino in 2015. So uh, here's what Vandalize is. You can, you can see what it is. Always, you know, unauthorized. Okay. And um, here's Katy Perry, who's wearing this Machino, uh, you know, dress. Uh, she showed up to some red carpet event with her, her dude and, you know, she had her little Krylon purse and showed up in a spray painted, um, you know, limousine, which you can kind of see here. And here and here's also uh, the dress on the runway, which very clearly has the vandalize on it. You can see the eyes. You can see, you can see where it says vandal. OK, um, so so Rhyme sued uh, Jeremy Scott for this dress. Um, that Jeremy Scott designed for Machino. Now, this is what ended up happening. They, um, this, this did go to, to court. They reached a settlement in 2016, but this was crazy. Um, Scott and Machino, Machino's uh, lawyers tried to argue this. They used a Black Dahlia defense, which basically this, if you, if you have any familiarity with Black Dahlia, it was about, um, you know, uh, it was a woman who was murdered in Los Angeles, I think in the 40s. I don't know, some of my facts may be wrong. And the way that this person was um, murdered was the dismemberment was artistic. Um, let's just say like the, how the body was laid out and dismembered was very meticulous and thought out and, you know, whatever. And what they tried to claim in this is that you know, well, would, you know, the, uh, whoever murdered Black Dahlia, um, would they be able to get copyright? Is that the expression of an idea? And then they related that to what Rhyme did, basically saying that can, you can't have copyright on a criminal act, okay, an expression that is criminal, like his vandalize is criminal, it's unauthorized, therefore he doesn't have copyright on it. Well, the murder analogy did not work. Um, you know, obviously, Rhyme got his paper because here's this. It doesn't matter if your graffiti or your art is authorized or not. You still have copyright on it. It's just the fact that Rhyme had to, in order to get this money, he had to reveal himself as a, as a criminal. Now, the thing with like graffiti writers or whatever, depending on where you live at, you may have a city where they have a vandal squad or, you know, those are in like heavy graph cities. New York, Philly, Detroit, whatever. Um, but um, they'll 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 stack your charges, meaning they'll they'll uh, keep a file on all of Rhymes' pieces that have popped up around the city on buses or whatever, and they'll note like, oh, here's forty five, you know, forty five, um, if you know. Uh, violations, 45 criminal acts of vandalism and trespassing. And so when you get nabbed that one time or you reveal yourself, your government name, not your pen name, um, they could hit you with all 45 of those uh, counts, you know. Um, so, yeah, they'll come at you, um, you know, pretty, pretty hard. So that's why a lot of people won't reveal who they are because, the, 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 you know, most cities do keep like files on, on prolific, uh, you know, graffiti writers. Uh, yeah, here's some examples of some buildings in um, Detroit with some really dope uh, graffiti on it. Um, and these piece, these, you know, these uh, have become issue as, as you know, Detroit is or was an auto manufacturing hub, central hub in the United States. Um, and all sorts of American vehicles are assembled there at least. Um, you can see here, uh, Cadillac did a little ad slash social media thing. Again, totally derivative, totally infringement. Um, they had to pay out. Here we have uh, Mercedes, you know, in front of the, um, the wall. Again, for an ad, can't do it, right? Like, why are you shooting here? Like, there's a specific reason why you're shooting in this parking lot or on the street. It's not just a lucky circumstance or serendipity that these graffiti pieces are there. That's a very strategic choice. 
and it constituted the deriv derivative use of someone else's copyrighted work. Here's just another image of, uh, from that Mercedes campaign. So can you copyright street art and graffiti? The answer is fuck yeah, it's, a, it's an expression and a medium, it's creative and it's original. Anybody who says that graffiti, I mean, listen, I know some throw ups and tags are not, are not that creative and maybe, don't, and maybe don't count, but like anything above that, and even some throw ups may, may, may account. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google it. <laughs> okay, um, but dude, Authorized murals, of course, you have a copyright on that. Now, what may, may change this is that uh, if someone hires you to do um, a piece on their, on their shop, if I hire someone to come to Andre's dispensaries and do a piece on the side of my shop, um, and there's no contract involved, that artist will own the copyright on that work. Now, if you're smart, you hire someone and you transfer the copyright. So meaning, I'm paying you to do this work to do this painting on my building and also I will own the copyright on the work so I can reprint it in various ways. If there is no contract involved and you don't sort those things out and you hire someone to do uh, a mural on your building, um, technically the muralist still owns the copyright on it. Although you paid them for that, you paid them for the work to actually paint it. You paid them for the time, for the labor, you're paying them for the paint or, 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 or whatever, but not the transfer of copyrights. That has to be something you, you put in paper. Um, but sometimes that stuff is, is transferred over. So yeah, commissioned graffiti, meaning someone hired you or gave you permission to do a wall, total copyright on it. Unauthorized graffiti, unauthorized street art, uh, yes, you totally have copyright on that. Again, you just have to reveal yourself um, as a criminal. And in this case, again, other people cannot reproduce it. No one can take, for instance, rhyme, right? No one can take that image, peel it off the wall metaphorically, and put it onto t-shirts, or onto menus, or onto lighters, or onto anything. Um, but if you own that building, you could cut that out of the wall and sell it, hang it up in your house or whatever, because that property, that physical property bearing the copyrighted work is yours, if, if that, if that kind of makes, um, that makes sense. But you just cannot reproduce it. So if Banksy does a dope piece on the side of my dispensary, that's awesome. People will come there. They'll want to check it out. They want to take pictures next to it. I could charge people to come look at it. Okay, whatever, because that's my property. I could rip it off the side of there, sell for $4 million, $10 million, whatever. I could not reproduce it on labels or T-shirts or menus or any of that stuff. That would be infringing on the copyright. That's a reproduction. Okay, and so with graffiti, copyright extends to the intangible uh, aspect of the work, meaning um, not the medium it's applied on. The medium applied on the wall is not is, you know, uh, they have copyright on that work, but they don't own the wall, you know, you know what I'm saying? So it's about, it's the physical embodiment, right, on a wall belongs to whoever owns that wall, right? But the intangible, which is technically tangible, it's the graffiti piece itself, right? You cannot reproduce on a film set, you cannot make copies of, you can't, um, you can't necessarily even take pictures of it and sell those. Um, unless those pictures show the work in context, which I'll talk about in a second here. Okay, so yeah, you can capture, uh, incidental capture, take a picture of a friend or a famous person or whatever, and it happens to be in front of one of those walls or whatever, that's fine, you can sell it, it doesn't matter. But if you stage it, that's infringement. You're exploiting that, 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 that work, okay? Um, but yeah, you, you need to, for your uses to be fair for graffiti, like if you do a gra graffiti book or a street art book, your, your book needs to show the art in context, the art on the side of a building, the art on a subway car, the art on a train car, and the train car in the train yard, or whatever. It cannot just be a close-up of the graffiti piece on the train, excluding the context and reproducing that. Unless you get permission from the graffiti artist. Um, themselves, and that could be written, that could be a contract, could be what, whatever. Um, you know, there's lots of people that 
you know, that do graffiti books, but they get permission from the graffiti writers to reproduce their, reproduce their work. Okay, so um, you can see, uh, here's some examples. Tattooed Walls was a graffiti book that came out and the author got sued and publisher got sued because it, it, it didn't show the graffiti in context. It was literally like just a close-up image of, of the pieces without permission from the artist. Uh, Tony Hawk, uh, skateboard, uh, the, the video game, Tony Hawk 2, got sued again for reproducing graffiti art uh, on video game play. Now, whatever, if you do Burnside, um, you know, park in Tony Hawk 2, and it uses actual graffiti that was there, you could argue maybe, like, uh, like tattoos on uh, players in uh, Ma uh, NBA 2K or or Madden or whatever, like that's trying to reproduce, um, authentically reproduce the the athlete or authentically reproduce Burnside or whatever. But um, Tony Hawk 2 got sued for reproducing other people's graffiti art out of context within the game. 